I've heard only negative stuff about parkour UK. What, <laughs> but I'd like to have some good things to say about them. What, what can you tell me about the organization, where it came from, and maybe where the drama is in regards to them right now in England? Uh, or the UK, rather. Yeah, I mean, I don't actually, I haven't been able to dig deep enough in the current drama. I mean, I can tell you how I feel about them in terms of, um, on a personal level. I mean, my, my son's school, for example, is having a parkour workshop, um, who's good, which is going to be taught by a person that it used to pay me to do workshops for him. Um, you know, that's just, but, um, as far as I know, he's not really from a parkour background, but that's, that's okay for parkour UK. So I think, I think there's, there's a, there's a genuine, maybe it's, a uh, to do with the standards. Cause I mean, the, the standards in people that actually do parkour and it, it always has been really is that you know you're not going to go to someone's gym if or, or a class in parkour if the teacher doesn't really doesn't come from a parkour background they yeah. can't tell you anything about they can't give any teaching points um where does where, where does that really leave you in terms of like even if it's a freestyle session, for for example, and you're trying new stuff, but if you get it completely wrong and you hurt yourself, how would they even know how to react to that? Do you know, do you know what I mean? Like, what does what does a person that doesn't do parkour know about an ankle thing? Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, they they probably haven't experienced it. You know? and uh, I, I think you should at least have an experience in what you're teaching. Mm. I know, because how can you even give people proper teaching points in how to move? Sure. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it at that without over pushing. Let me um let me add some context from what I've heard. And then I, I'm going to push back on your view simply because I want to play devil's advocate yeah. because I've thought a little bit about this too. So what I've heard, which is pretty cursory, like very, you know, top, nothing too deep, is that Parkour UK more or less prides himself very much on these training standards and these certifications that experienced tracers look at and think is, is misaligned with Parkour's uh, I don't know, method or intention or potential or, or style, something like that. Yeah. And so, and if you somehow work through the years and pass all these certifications, which, which are incredibly difficult and which don't have necessarily anything to do with parkour specifically, then you're approved by parkour UK to teach parkour in the UK. It's, this is what I'm hearing more or less. Is that at least somewhat accurate um i haven't done the qualification with parkour uk so i wouldn't be able to say no. um if some people have said that it's kind of like it's worked up from the uh, parkour gen qualifications yeah yeah um yeah i mean there's the there's the view that that you're just all you're trying to do is just like bring a new sport to an area but you know mm -hmm. just I think people are just annoyed by the you feel like you're, it's not 100% something's not 100% honest if it's trying to give it the name of something that it's not really been taught in that method mm-hmm I don't know if I actually answered your question with that. You added some context. I'm looking up a conversation I had with somebody. I forget his name, but he used to be a coach for Parkour UK, was very verbal about it, and then recently said, I can't talk about it anymore publicly because Parkour UK is like threatening legal action or something. I looked at my Instagram, I'm trying to remember his name. 
because I'm basically repeating what I understand him saying. It's okay. You don't, uh, don't have to say his name. I think I won't say his name. I got him right here though. Uh, he seemed like a really cool guy that cared about parkour deeply. Uh, deeply cared about parkour and had tried to influence parkour UK's direction by becoming a part of the organization. Like, yeah, like you know what? He's like, I don't agree with them, but I'm gonna stick with them to understand them better and help them out because parkour needs this to be right. And then they just kind of stonewalled him and just discarded him type thing. So we started speaking out about it. And then... Yeah, I mean... Anyway, I'm going to have him on the podcast, actually. Yeah. You, all right, okay. That's cool. I mean, very, very good, Trisset. Like, uh... <laughs> um, yeah, for, from, what, from what I understand, that's hopefully going to lead to there being a bit of um, competition between Parkour UK and maybe some other associations that might pop up, hopefully. Because that, sure. that can always... The only thing that can... Well, it can make all sorts of issues. But usually what happens in terms of like business and stuff, the more competition you have, quite often the standards do go up with it as well. Totally. So that's that's what I'm really hoping for. And if we're talking about the same person, then the standards will... He, he's doing the right thing. Sure. To get the standards going upwards. So, yeah. What about this, though? And this was, this was my concern. This has been my concern for years with Parkour UK. And this is from across the pond where I literally know nothing about what they're doing. But I heard somehow that they had been approved by the government to be the governing body of parkour. Yeah. And the problem is, is once you're that, you basically have a monopoly and you've circumvented the competition yeah. potential, right? I mean, we have this in the, in, the, in the U.S. with a bunch of government agencies that have a monopoly on, on accreditation and things like that. And so there's no competition. Like, I'll, I'll use a very innocuous example colleges right like how do you get accredited as a college in the united states right well there's like a board i believe that you know more or less i could be slightly off on this but i heard about this the other day there's like a group in the government that says who's accredited to give certain classes and who can give an education right yeah well what if they're captured by the universities right and then it's like well how do you get accredited by this agency that then won't accreditize you and or has completely you know, wonky ideas about what education is or what subjects are important, et cetera. And you can't compete, right? You have to compete. You have to compete under something else. Like say, well, we have a college, but we can't give you a, a degree. It's yeah. like, well, good luck competing with colleges that can give you a degree when the labor market is looking for a degree. You know what I mean? So it's like you chop off the legs of competition and that's not good for anybody. And so if, if you can't have a parkour class with the word parkour, unless parkour UK agrees with you, then that's a problem, yeah. right? They've, they, they've institutionally captured the brand such that you have to say, well, our class is free running or our class is urban movement or something else that then doesn't resonate in the same way. Yeah. And, and that's the detriment, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, what, what really happened is uh, from the moment that it became Parkour UK, it meant that if you had a different qualification, you couldn't get um, insurance. For parkour, really? Yeah. Wow! They became it became an insurance issue, and then obviously no one's going to employ someone who doesn't have um, public liability insurance, you know, because accidents do happen. And uh, so, yeah, because previous to that, you could have things like, um, I mean, um, exercise to music qualifications. You could have that and be able to teach parkour technically because it's it's got all the components that you will need for your parkour classes so you can you can then explain to your insurance that well because all the elements of parkour are technically covered by um exercise to music you can then you can then get insurance for that and then go, yeah, well, I'm doing a parkour class because of all of these bits cover it. 
you know. But then now the people that are going to employ you, they're, they're going to be like, so do you have the insurance that says Park or UK, you know, or has has Park or UK vetted you kind of thing, you know, first. Wow. Yeah. So essentially, I would assume it's put, it's put a few people out of a job and it's kind of, it might have upset quite a few people. Well, it upsets me. I'm not even, and I'm like 5,000 miles away, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> believe me, like nobody's more ardent about what parkour is. There's very few people in the world, maybe 10, that are more ardent about what parkour is than me. Like I learned from David Bell. Like I have a vested interest in the lineage of Raymond Bell to David Bell to Adam Dunlap, you know, of this, of this discipline, you know, but, uh, you know, even ir even irrespective of you could say my benefit from that type of lineage is a belief in what it is, and so to see people that don't respect that belief is quite maddening to me. No, so yeah, it upset a lot of people for sure. Yeah. <laughs>